Hey everyone, uh, so today we're going to look at solving quadratic equations by factoring. So we've looked at a couple different ways. You've got the quadratic formula, you've got completing the square, you've got graphing. Um, this is going to be just another way to solve quadratic equations. And once we get through this, you kind of got your choice of any of those that work for you. Now what we want to look at is this form of this equation on the board. This is what's called factored form. Now the a value is just a number, okay? So that's a constant. The p and the q are your factors or are your solutions. And we want to be able to solve these quadratics out, put it in this form, and then use the zero product property to end up figuring out what our solutions are. So our ultimate goal is to get them in that form right there. a times x minus p times x minus q. Okay, and the, like I said, the P and the Q values represent those solutions. All right, so here's a couple things that you're going to be given. So this first example asks you to find the function given certain factors. So basically what they are giving you here is the P and the Q value. And it really doesn't matter which one is P and which one's Q, but those are the two factors you have. Um, so the biggest key here is you're going to take each of these and you're going to substitu substitute them in for P and Q. So when you do that, you end up with, in this first one, X minus 3. And for that second one, you've got X minus the negative 1. Well, when you have that minus a negative because of multiplication, that becomes the X plus 1. So there is your actual, or your actual function. Now what we want to do is take this and simplify it and solve it. And we use FOIL to do that. Remember back in uh, some of those earlier videos we talked about FOIL. FOIL is when you take first times first, so x times x is x squared. Out times out, so outers. Um, x times 1 is just a positive x. Inner is a negative 3 and an x, which is a negative 3x. And then last is negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3. Then you take and simplify this all the way down. You've got like terms right here, x and negative 3x is a negative 2x, minus 3, and here is your final function, f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3, and you're done. So that would be, if you graph this thing, the parabola where it would cross through 3 and negative 1 on the x-axis, and that's how we know they are the solutions. Pause the video, um, take a minute, try example b, See if you can work through that one. Okay, hopefully you guys had enough time to work through this. So if you set this up as the factored form, you've got x minus 3 fourths and x minus 5. Now there's a couple different ways you can go through this. You could foil it the way it is right now. Or you can take this and rewrite it into uh, a different form that looks something like this. And the way that it works out is you're going to take your 4 and you're going to move it out in front and you end up with a 4x minus 3. Now what really happened there is you're just multiplying each of these two terms, so multiplying the x and multiplying the 3 fourths by a positive 4. Okay? So when I multiply by a positive 4 you end up with that 4x minus 3 and that's the form we end up with. And now you just FOIL this out. So 4x times x gives you a 4x squared. 4x times a negative 5 is a negative 20x. Negative 3 times x is a negative 3x. And negative 3 times negative 5 is a positive 15. And like last problem, combine your like terms. So the two middle terms become a negative 23x. You got your plus 15 there. And here is your actual function. So if you're given those two solutions, you can set your functions up that way, uh, multiply them together, and then you'll end up with the function that they're asking for. All right, now the second possibility is going the other direction. Now when you go the other direction, they're going to ask you to find the factors from a quadratic um, equation. So here's how it's done. Back in some of those first videos, um, we looked at factoring. You're just going to factor these things. Okay? So you've done completing the square, you've done quadratic formula. If you all have a choice, I think the easiest way for you guys would be just to factor. 
Okay, so we look at this first one, 16x squared plus 8x equals 0. Look for a common factor, and in this case, it's going to be an 8x. So we take an 8x out of there. Now the key is remembering that factoring is division. So if you take 16x squared divided by 8x, 16 divided by x, or 8 is 2, x squared divided by x is an x. Okay, you subtract your exponents. Then you move to the next one. 8x divided by 8x is a 1. You must remember that 1. Now, what this zero product property is that's referred to up here, and we've seen this in a couple of the past videos, is taking each of these two factors and setting them equal to zero. So the first one is 8x equals zero. The next one is 2x plus 1 equals zero. And solving those two problems. So for this first one, you divide by 8, and that gives you x equals zero. There's your first solution. On the second one, you subtract your 1. So you got 2x equals a negative 1. Then divide by 2, that gives you x equals negative a half, and there's your second solution. And if you remember from the fundamental uh, theorem of algebra, because that has a 2 as a degree, you will have two solutions there. Okay, on example B, you're looking at this, you got an x squared, you got a 64. Hopefully something that pops into your head is they are both perfect squares. Okay, so this is the difference of squares. So when we factor this, you get an x and an x here and here. You get an 8 and an 8 here. And then for difference of squares, you have opposite signs. So it's x plus 8, x minus 8. And then you can take each one, set them equal to 0. So x plus 8 equals 0. Subtract 8, you've got x equals a negative 8. Okay, for this one, you got x minus 8 equals 0. You add 8 to both sides. That will give you a positive 8. And your two solutions are 8 and negative 8. And just like any equation that you solve, if you substitute them back in, you should be able to prove that that is the correct answer. Okay, uh, next couple problems. Same basic idea. We're still going to just factor these. Okay, so factoring this one here, I set up my two parentheses. <coughs> uh, for the x squared, that's going to give me an x and an x. Now I need two things that multiply together to give me 20 and add up to 9. And some of you guys maybe can do this in your head. Others may need to list the numbers. So you got 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. And the two that add up to 9 are a positive 4 and a positive 5. And then from there, zero product property. It says x plus 4 equals 0, x plus 5 equals 0. So for this one, subtract 4. This one, subtract 5. And so on the left-hand side, when you subtract the 4, you get negative 4. On the right-hand side, when you subtract the 5, you got a negative 5. And there are your two solutions. All right. Um, let's look at this one. Now this one, remember, you've got a 15 in this front. That's your A value. This is when the problem becomes a little bit different. Okay, so we have to put this 15x here, 15x here. Then you take the 15 and multiply across. So that gives you a 15. Uh, in this case, if I'm looking for two numbers to multiply to 15, add up to a negative 8, I've got 1 and 15, and 3 and 5. Well, the only ones that work in that case are the negative 3 and a negative 5 because I have to make a negative 8. Now that I've got those factored, I look at my two numbers here, and I ask myself, do they have a common multiple? And in this case, yeah, they have a 3 in common. So I divide both of them by 3, so I get 5x minus 1. Over here, on the right-hand side, they have a 5 in common. So I divide by 5, you get 3x minus 1. And then using the zero product property, I set them both to 0. Okay, solving this out. In this case on the left, you add the 1 to both sides, so you get 5x equals 1. Divide by 5, and x equals 1 fifth. On the right, you follow essentially the same steps. So you add 1, so you get 3x equals 1. Divide by 3, and x equals 1 third. You now have your two solutions, and you're done. Okay, on your own, try these two out. Pause the video, come back in just a second. Okay, hopefully that was enough time for you guys to do it. Once you pause the video, 
Uh, we come back and factor this. So this gives you an x, an x. We have opposite signs of plus and minus. Uh, two things that multiply to 21 and add up to a negative 4. We're going through all of our list of numbers. It's going to be a 7 and a 3. And so my 3 is going to be positive. My 7 is going to be negative because when I take positive 3 minus 7, I get the negative 4 I need. Now with enough work, what you guys should see is when you use that zero product property, what it is essentially doing is taking the opposite of these numbers. So here in this uh, set of parentheses, I have x plus 3, which means negative 3 is going to be one of my solutions. In the second parentheses, I have an x minus 7, which means 7 is going to be one of my solutions. And there are your answers. Okay, for this second one over here, um, I'm going to look at having 4x and 4x in both of those. Okay, I multiply my 4 to the 9 and get 36. So two things that multiply to 36, add up to a negative 12, is a negative 6 and a negative 6. Well, both of these are the exact same. They both have a common factor in each case of 2. So I take the 2 out, I get 2x minus 3. I know my other one's going to be the exact same, so I can actually write it as 2x minus 3 squared. And now I take the 2x minus 3, set it equal to 0, so add 3 to both sides gives you 2x equals 3, divide by 2, divide by 2, and x equals 3 halves. Now, the question that sometimes comes up, this has a 2 up here in my original problem. That means I should have two solutions, but I only have one here. Well, that's possible because they're the exact same. That solution just happens two times, which means it still does work out okay. All right, final one for this section. Word problem. It says a football is kicked and is in flight by, uh, that's modeled by h of x equals negative 4x squared plus 21x minus 5, where x is your time. How long is the ball in the air? So we are essentially trying to find x. Well, when the ball hits the ground, your height is going to be 0. Okay, because the ball is now striking the ground. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that function, negative 4x squared plus 21x minus 5, and we're going to set it equal to 0. We want to know when the ball has hit the ground. So to start this, we factor. Okay, so factoring this, you set it up like this. You've got your negative 4x here, negative 4x here, and now you multiply across. So we've got a negative 4 times a negative 5 is a negative, or sorry, is a positive 20. So I want two things to multiply to 20 and add up to 21. Well, the only possible choices are plus 20 and plus 1. And then you look through here, decide what are these two things in have in common, and it's a 4. And in reality, we could even take out a negative 4. Okay, that's going to make my x turn positive. Okay, divide negative 4 by negative 4 is a positive 1. And then positive 20 divided by negative 4 gives you a negative 5. On the right-hand side, there's really nothing in common, so I'm going to leave it as a negative 4 plus 1. Now, using the zero product property, you have x minus 5 equals 0. Add 5 to both sides, you get x equals 5. You take the negative 4x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, subtract your 1, so that's a negative 4x equals a negative 1. Divide by negative 4, that gives you x equals 1 fourth. Okay, now you really need to understand what these two numbers mean. It's when is this thing uh, actually making the solution equal 0. Well, what that's saying is that your ball is leaving the foot, basically, one fourth of a second after the timer starts, which does not help us in this equation. What this is saying is that's when the ball strikes the ground. Okay, So the ball, after it's kicked, stays in the air for five seconds before it hits the ground. And that's your solution. Okay, um, so that's how you're going to factor by, or solve by factoring. So now you've got solve by graphing, quadratic formula, completing the square, square rooting, and now factoring. Okay, analyze a problem, see what works. Um, if it's factorable, the way that we just did it in this section, try and factor it. If it's not, you've got to try another option 
which usually leads to completing the square or the quadratic formula. Okay, if you need help, please contact me online. Otherwise, good luck with your assignments.